Hey guys, this is Dave Mosher, producer for Discovery Space at space.discovery.com. That is the official Discovery Channel website all about space, and this is your weekly wrap-up where I give you the three biggest things that happened in space last week. Apologize for not putting out a video last week. I was really distracted with moving, as you can see. There's boxes and all kinds of junk around me. I just settled into a new apartment. I also had some other distractions going on, so it was kind of muddled and I had to cut out the video. Apologize, I'll make it up to you guys. Uh, that said, let's jump right into the wrap-up. As you guys probably know, there's, there's a remote chance of asteroids coming and slamming into the Earth and causing all kinds of devastation, i.e., take, take a look at this. You know, this asteroid is clearly throwing up a giant wave. Well, scientists are looking at that with supercomputers, and they're seeing, okay, well, if an asteroid did slam into the Earth, uh, how, what kind of wave would it make? Would it really make a really devastating tsunami and just wipe out coastal civilization? Um, so the scientists actually crunched the numbers, and what they found was that, okay, every, every, every hundred million years or so, a six-mile-wide asteroid will smack into the Earth. It's just bound to happen. It's kind of what happened to the dinosaurs, sorry guys. Um, but this, the, the wave rays they found out is not as bad as you might think. Um, okay, so when an asteroid does smack of, of that size, that's about six miles wide, it's going to raise a wave hundreds of feet high. It, you know, it's just going to throw up all this water. The thing is, is, it's not like a tsunami caused by an earthquake. The wavelength, or you know, the wave is this much high, but the width of it is much shorter. So an uh, earthquake tsunami is really long, and so all that water just pushes onto the land. In the case of an asteroid, it's really sharp and really abrupt, so as soon as it hits land, it kind of collapses. And in fact, on the way, it gets really, really short, especially if the asteroid were to land in the deep ocean. That sort of softens the blow. So the tsunami scenario isn't as bad as we once thought, so that was pretty cool. Um, next update I have for you guys, you, you know this. This is the Kepler telescope. Of course, you know what that is. Uh, well, it's, it's dust cover. The thing on the end here was popped off the other week, and what it did is it's, it took its very first picture of the stars. And this thing is designed to look for these Earth-like planets. And this is, of course, the Earth. And the way it does that is, as I said, it took the picture. Check this out. This is what is actually produced. These are individual sensors, each little square here. I don't know if you can see that. But within these squares, there are little tiny dots. This is actually an inverse image. So where it's white, it really should be black, and the little dark points should actually be points of light. But it's just easier to see this way. So uh, the camera took this picture. In fact, you can download the full-size original of this. It's 105 megabytes, which is enormous. Just a phenomenal amount of information there. But it's going to, Kepler is going to focus on, on 100,000 of these little specks, and it's going to look for changes in them so that it can find planets orbiting distant stars that are about on the orbit of Earth and about the size of Earth, hence Earth-like planets. So that's pretty cool. It took its first picture, and you can actually go to the blog, and I'll give you the link for that later, and see, get a link to that full-size image I was telling you about. <clears throat> Next thing I want to tell you about is this. Okay, it's kind of a pixelated little blob, right? This is actually a Hubble Space Telescope image of the planet, sorry, the mini-planet, or you might even call it an asteroid, Ceres, and this is hanging out in the asteroid belt and it's covered in mud, probably water, probably organic chemicals. I bet you never heard about it. You know, I didn't really hear about it until recently anyway, but Ceres is really cool, and there's already a spacecraft on the way there, and it kind of looks like this. This is called the Dawn spacecraft, you can see right there, sort of superimposed. Um, but Dawn is on the way there. It's going to map the surface of this little planet, and then NASA now wants to send a follow-up mission to land something on top of it. And it's, there's a very good chance there might be life there. It's uh, in between Mars and Jupiter. It's got water. It's got organic materials. You know, so anything can happen there. It's got these volcanoes of water and liquid, so scientists think. And uh, Dawn is going to find out. So that's really cool. This, this mission idea is sort of underway, and it's kind of taking root with people, and they want to do it. So that's pretty cool news. Um, and this is kind of an extra update for you guys. You know about Stephen Colbert. He has the Colbert Report. Well, I told you a couple weeks ago and kind of followed how he wanted to get a space station node called Node 3 named after him. And this is what it looks like. He didn't get it named after him. Um, NASA, even though Colbert won by the vast majority of all the votes cast online by people like you, they named it Tranquility. Okay, that's boring. However, they did name a treadmill after him and the acronym is Colbert. So that's pretty cool. He finally got something named after him in space. 
Pretty awesome. And uh, this week, by the way, on space.discovery.com, which has a brand new design, so you should definitely check it out, um, we have a, a wide angle on back to the moon. So NASA's efforts to get back to the moon, the spacecraft are sitting there to map it, how astronauts plan to land on it and what they plan to do with it, what's the moon good for, things like that. So be sure you check out the site. And if you want to get to my blog where you can find more information about everything you saw here, that's at blogs.discovery.com forward slash space underscore disco. That said, thanks so much for joining and hope to see you on the site.